Hey everyone! Today, I'm going to teach you how to build a budget tracker with Flutter and the Notion API. You'll learn how to set up a database in Notion, use Notion's API to retrieve data, and visualize this data in your Flutter apps. A huge thanks to Notion for sponsoring this video. And with that, let's get into it. Notion is an all-in-one workspace. You can use it for taking notes, creating databases, managing projects, organizing your schedule, and more. I personally use Notion every day to track my habits and manage my projects. If you don't already have a Notion account, tap the link in the description below and sign up so you can follow along with the tutorial. Once you create your account, you'll see a workspace similar to mine. If it's your first time using Notion, take some time to go through their Getting Started guide. Let's tap on Add a Page and make a new page with the title Budget Tracker. To create a table database, tap on Table in the Database section. We want our table to look like this, with name, category, price, and date columns. We already have our name column. Tap on Tags and rename it to Category. We can change its property type to Select, which means each item can only have one category. Tap on a cell to start creating options. I created food, entertainment, personal, and transportation. Tap the plus button to add a new column. This will be our price column with a property type of number. Lastly, we have a date column with a date property type. Now let's populate our database with some mock data. I left one category unselected, and I'll show you how to handle this scenario later on in the video. You can copy the data I have, or create your own. We can also sort our table data in descending order by date by adding a sort. To access our database, we need to create an integration. Head over to developers.notion.com and tap on My Integrations in the top right. Click on New Integration. I'll name mine Budget Tracker. Double check the associated workspace and click Submit. We'll need the seeker key to access the API. Back in our Budget Tracker table, we have to link this database with our integration. Tap the Share button and tap on this field. Select the integration you just created and tap Invite. Now we're all done with our Notion setup. In a new Flutter project, let's go into our pubspec.yaml. We're going to add four packages. FL chart to create our spending pie chart. HTTP for making HTTP requests to the Notion API. INTL for formatting date times as strings and flutter.env for loading our environment variables like our API key at runtime. In our root directory, we'll create our .env file, and here we have two environment variables, Notion API key and Notion database ID. Let's go back into Notion to get these values. The Notion API key is the secret key in our app's integration page. We can grab our Notion database ID by going to our budget tracker and extracting it from the URL. The database ID is the string right after the forward slash and before the question mark. Let's copy both these values and add them to our environment. Now in main.dart, we can load our .env by making our main function asynchronous and awaiting .env.load. In the assets section, we have to specify our .env file as we want it to be included in our application. Make sure you also add the file to your gitignore, so you don't accidentally include it in your git repository. Let's change the title of our app, hide the debug banner, set our primary color to colors.white, and set our home to budget screen. We'll define budget screen as a stateful widget below and return a scaffold. Before we work on any UI, let's define our item model. This will be our app's representation of an item from Notion. Each item has a name, category, price, 
and date, where price is a double and date is of type date time. All of the constructor parameters are required. Now let's make a file called budget repository, where we'll interact with the Notion API using the HTTP package. At the top of the file, import.env, HTTP, and our item model. For testing purposes, our repository takes in an HTTP client and creates a client by default if no client is passed in. We'll also add a dispose method that closes the client when called. We won't be using it in this video, but do keep in mind that you should always close your HTTP clients when you're done using them. Let's look at the Notion API docs and see how we can query data from our database. We have to hit this endpoint using a post request and pass in the database ID as a parameter. We can also include parameters for filtering, sorting, and pagination. To see what a query to our database would return, I'm going to use a REST API client called ThunderClient, which you can grab as an extension in VS Code. Set the request method to post and paste in the endpoint, substituting database ID with your own database ID. In the auth tab, we have to define a bearer token, which is our secret key. Finally, we have to specify the Notion API version, which is the date the version was released. For this video, the Notion version is 2021-05-13. When we hit send, we get back our response. Keep this open, as we're going to refer to this as we write our getItems method. GetItems is asynchronous and returns a future list of items. Inside of a try-catch block, define the endpoint with the Notion database ID from .env. We can define base URL as a private variable at the top of the file. To make the post request, we call post on our client, passing in the URL as a URI, our secret key as the bearer token, and the Notion API version. If the response is successful, we decode the response.body using JSON decode from Dart Convert and then map each object in results to an item. Let's go back to our item model and write the from map factory constructor. From map takes in map string dynamic. To figure out how to parse the data, we can look at the HTTP response again. All the data we need is nested inside properties. So let's break that out into a properties variable. We can get the name by going into the name field, then title, index zero, and then accessing plain text. Note how I have question marks to make sure that if a field we access does not exist, the left side evaluates to null, and then the null check returns a question mark. This is important because we don't want any errors if a field does not exist. Category is inside category, select, and then name. Price is inside price and number. And date is inside date, date, start. However, we want to convert this into a datetime object. Let's define this as a date string. If date string is not null, we parse the string into a datetime. Otherwise, we return datetime.now. And that's all we have to do to convert a map into an item. To sort the list of items by date in descending order, you can use the sort method on the list and compare the dates. If the response is not successful, we throw a custom failure with the message, something went wrong. Let's do the same in the catch block. In a new file called failure model, we define a string message and a constructor. Remember to import this file in the budget repository. Now that we have a functioning budget repository, we can display our items from Notion in our app. Add a late private variable called future items, and we'll fetch the items inside init state. Scaffold has an app bar with the title budget tracker. The body is a future builder with future items as the future. If the snapshot has data, we want to show the pie chart and list tiles. If there is an error, we cast snapshot.error to a failure and display error message text. Otherwise, we show a loading spinner. To display the list tiles, 
We get our list of items from snapshot.data and return a list view builder with item count items.length. For each item, we return a container with a border radius and a box shadow. To set the color of the border, we'll call a function called getCategoryColor, which we'll define outside of our budget screen state, as we'll access this in other files. We return a different color based on the category string that is passed into the function. The child of the container is a list tile that displays the item name as the title. The subtitle has the category and uses the intl package to format the date time as a string. And trailing is the price of the item with a minus and dollar sign. All of our items appear in the list. For the spending chart, make a new file called spending chart with a stateless widget that takes in a list of items. In main.dart, we increment our item count by 1. If the index is 0, we return the spending chart widget. Because we incremented item count by 1, don't forget to add minus 1 when getting an individual item from the items list. In order to display the different categories and the corresponding values, we have to create a spending map. Iterate over items and sum the item prices for each category. Now our spending map is populated with data. Return a card widget with elevation and a rounded rectangle border. The child is a container with height 360.0, and the child is a pie chart from flchart. Here we map the spending map into a list of pie chart section data, passing in the color, radius, title, and value. Now this looks great, but it's hard to tell what each color represents. To add label indicators, wrap the pie chart in an expanded widget, and wrap the expanded widget in a column. Add a size box for padding, and then use a wrap widget to display the indicators. We can map the keys of the spending map to a private indicator widget, passing in the color and text. Indicator is a stateless widget with color and text that returns a row with main axis size set to min. Then we display a container with the specified color and text widget with the category name. Save that, and our labels appear. The final feature we have to add is a way to refresh our data. Wrap the future builder in a refresh indicator. Inside onRefresh, we assign future items to the new batch of items and call setState to rebuild our UI. Now if I add a new expense to our Notion database, and then pull down to refresh, the change is reflected immediately. When we remove the expense, it disappears from our app. And now we're all done with our budget tracker using the Notion API. I hope you learned a lot, and I can't wait to see what you build with our API. If you enjoyed the video, remember to leave a like and subscribe. For complete Flutter courses, check out my website, launchclub.io. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.